welcome back to Queen City Corals. In our last video, we went over all the equipment you need to have on your reef tank. And in this video, we're going over all the necessary equipment that isn't necessary. One essential piece of equipment that we didn't really talk about in the last video is a power at bar. Now, you can use a standard electrical outlet, you can use a standard power surge protector, or if you wanna get a little more fancy, you can get something like this ADJ bar that we use quite frequently here at the shop, and that allows you to simply press a little button and control each individual outlet, making it a lot easier to turn off things like pumps when you wanna remove them to clean them or just turn them off so you can feed your fish. Now, these are definitely not necessary, but are a very nice addition to any aquarium. And we probably won't be adding one for our 15 gallon, mainly just because it's so small, we're not gonna have a ton of stuff plugged in. But on pretty much all of our larger systems, we have one or two ADJs. If we don't have our next piece of equipment, which is an aquarium controller. Now with aquarium controllers, they're gonna serve a ton of different functions. The first and primary being turning on and off outlets. Now, unlike that ADJ that I was talking about, it doesn't have physical switches that come with it, but it allows you to control them remotely from either a computer or a phone or a tablet that you might have set up next to your tank. These come in very handy, especially when you want to program it to do multiple tasks or turn things off at a certain time. For instance, if you have an auto feeder set up, you can activate your pumps to turn off for 15 minutes after your feeder goes off to allow your fish time to actually eat the food without it going straight into your filters. Now, the downside, as I said, is these definitely can be pricey. And if you're looking to do more specific things, the programming can be a little more complex. We use mostly Apex controllers here and they've worked very well for us. There are several other brands, including Hydros, which has come out with some very interesting technology recently that we'll get into a little bit later, but I personally have not used them, so I can't really vouch for those products. The Apex is definitely the go-to standard in the industry and has been around for over a decade. So it's definitely very tried and tested, and we have quite a few here in the shop with several different modules. Now, these modules you can add on to perform different functions. Typically, these controllers will come with a power bar and some sort of probe selection, depending on which model you go for. They'll usually always include a temperature sensor, which is very helpful for controlling your heater, turning it on and off. And we touched a little bit on that in our previous video. They can also include probes for things like pH, salinity, and ORP but these are a lot less important and don't really affect your tank too much and are more of an added benefit if you're looking to do specific things like leave your tank for a while or set up auto water changes. These can be very beneficial. On the Neptune, you can get the Neptune dose and that is a doser that allows you to add or remove things from your aquarium. So some people can set it up to do automatic water changes. So it'll remove water from your tank and then add water back in. Or the more common use is to dose chemicals like calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. That's typically what we have them set up for here at the shop. And these elements basically allow your corals to grow. Your corals will combine the alkalinity and calcium in the water and use those to actually create their skeleton. Now, magnesium provides the purpose of preventing those calcium and alkalinity ions from bonding while they're in the aquarium. This prevents things like buildup all around your heaters and pumps from creating an issue with them long term. Now, dosing is something that you might not need for a while, if ever. For instance, on this 15 gallon that we're setting up, we probably won't add a doser because water changes will be plenty because we have such a small water volume here a five gallon water change is a 33% water change, and that will replenish 33% of the elements. Now, in a typical reef tank, your corals will consume these elements as they grow, and since we have such a small tank, we can very easily replace those two water changes. In our larger systems, that's not as easy for us to do, so we typically add these dosers to replenish those elements manually. It definitely makes your life a lot easier if you have a dosing pump, but it's definitely not required, and especially starting up, I wouldn't recommend getting a dosing pump because you one, likely aren't going to need it, 
and two, can very easily overdose your tank, especially if it's set up on a doser. So it's very important to continuously test your water and ensure that you're not overdosing or underdosing your tank and maintaining these levels at a proper level. Now there are a bunch of different brands of dosers out there, but the ones that we found to work the best here at the shop are the Neptune Dose, the Sentia Doser, and the j -Bow Doser. These all work very well and are also a little bit more accurate and typically don't have the connectivity issues that some of the other ones have, especially the j -Bows that have the controls on the unit itself. This makes it really easy to program without having to pull out my phone and log onto an app. Now, the downsides of some of these dosers is that some of them aren't able to do things like water changes, and that's really just the Sentia and the j -Bow. The dose is able to do that, but for our applications here, we don't really need that, and we're typically just dosing chemicals into the aquarium, so all these brands work very well for us. Now, when it comes to dosing, you're gonna need a good test kit to determine what the levels in your tank actually are, and then apply the correct amount of dosage to it to reevaluate your levels and get them dialed in. Now, test kits like API are good for getting a general idea of where your parameters are at, but I recommend using a more accurate test kit like HANA or Red C if you really wanna fine tune your results and get something that's a lot more repeatable and will give you a more precise reading. Things like API are gonna usually use a color and it can sometimes be a little difficult to tell which color you're actually looking at because the range that they give you on the chart is typically a little bit wider than what you'll actually get. So I recommend using something like that HANA checker because it'll actually give you the reading by itself and determine everything on its own. All you have to do is add the reagents and it does the rest for you. Now my favorite part about the HANA testers is that they give you a precise number on the reading of your aquarium water, whereas some of the other ones take a little bit of guesswork because the color chart isn't super accurate and you're trying to match up the color of your reagent to the color that it says on the chart. Now, if you wanna avoid testing altogether, there are products out there like the Trident, the Mastertronic, and the CoralView Hydros Kraken that actually test your water on their own and will give you regular readings on the different elements in your aquarium. However, these can sometimes be a little inaccurate and suffer from calibration errors when you do things like swap out the reagent or a line gets clogged. So I typically recommend if you do use these to merely use them as a tool rather than something to actually base all your dosing off of. For instance, if you see a swing on these readings, it's a good idea to go in and test your water manually to determine if there's actually an error or if it was just a mistake with the tester itself. This can be very beneficial in detecting swings early and allow you to save yourself from a tank crash, but I definitely wouldn't solely rely on these for your dosing. Now our next piece of non-essential equipment is probably the most popular and most common. It is protein skimmers. Now what protein skimmers do is they use a pump that intakes air and tank water and sucks them up and pushes them through typically a bubble plate that creates bubbles that foam up into a cup. And what these bubbles do as they form up is they attach to proteins such as fish poop or fish waste and remove those from your aquarium. What this does is it reduces things like nitrates and phosphates without the need for a water change. Typically, I recommend these for larger tanks because they are not effective at smaller sizes. So for our 15 gallon, these smaller skimmers that would fit in there typically aren't gonna do as good of a job and also because we can do a very easy water change that would remove way more nutrients than that skimmer is going to. I typically just think it's a lot easier and more cost effective to do a little water change. But on a larger tank where you'd have to do a very large water change, the skimmer is gonna be much more effective and probably pay for itself in a couple of months. Now, the other benefit of the skimmer is that it adds air into your water. And what that does is it increases your pH. This can be very beneficial, and if you guys wanna learn more about pH, you can check out our pH video up here. But you don't really need to worry about pH too much, especially in the beginning, because it's more important for hard corals, which you'll get into a little bit later in your reefing career. I typically recommend starting off with soft corals that aren't gonna to be too affected by pH. So the skimmer is mostly gonna be used for nutrient control in this situation. And again, I would really only recommend it if you have a 40 gallon or larger, any smaller than that, and you're not gonna get too much use out of it. 
and it's gonna be better to do some smaller water changes to remove those nutrients manually. Now, when it comes to skimmer brands, again, there are a bunch of different ones out there. The ones we use here at the shop are the Reef Octopus, which I've used for about a decade now and is definitely my favorite skimmer personally, and the Simplicity, which has become one of my favorite skimmers recently because they use DC pumps, which are a lot quieter, and they're also one of the best bang for your buck skimmers out there on the market right now, especially for the larger sizes. You can get one for the price of a much smaller skimmer that uses an AC pump. So if you're looking for a good budget skimmer, I would go with the Simplicity. If you're looking to really ball out, I would go with the Reef Octopus. But again, there are plenty of other brands out there that are also gonna work very well. Now my favorite piece of equipment on this list is definitely gonna be an automatic top off. Now what this does is essentially automatically refill your tank whenever water evaporates. Now when water evaporates from a reef tank, what happens is only the fresh water will evaporate and the salt will stay in the aquarium. So you need to top it off with fresh water. Now you don't wanna use just regular tap water because there are a lot of contaminants and pollutants in there that can be very harmful for your aquarium. So you wanna use something called RODI water. Now what this is, is reverse osmosis deionized water. But in layman's terms, it's water that has absolutely nothing in it and is just pure water. What this does is provide your aquarium with the necessary water to correct the salinity without adding any pollutants to it. Now you can either get an RODI machine yourself or typically local fish stores like us here at Queen City Corals will be able to sell water and it's usually pretty inexpensive. We sell our water here for 50 cents a gallon, but it can range all the way up to a dollar or a dollar 50, but it's typically still pretty affordable, especially compared to an RODI system that can be one, two, or even $300 and require plumbing into either a hose or a sink in order to get it to function, in addition to the water you're gonna be paying for to actually run the unit. Now, if you have a smaller tank, I typically recommend not purchasing a RODI system, mainly just because it's not gonna be very cost effective because you don't need a ton of top-off water. But getting back to auto top-offs, I definitely recommend having one on your aquarium, mainly just because it is quite an inconvenience, especially for a taller tank like the one we have here that's sitting on a stand. Because of this, I recommend getting an ATO that'll automatically, through some sort of sensor, replenish your aquarium. Now, you can get one that works with your aquarium controller. All the controller brands typically have one that will automatically refill your aquarium as the water level goes down through either a optical sensor or a gravity float switch. And some of these ATO units will use both, which is more of a fail safe than anything else. Here at the store, we run all of ours off gravity just because we have our RO container a little higher up. So it's very easy to flow down and we don't run into any problems. These work very simply and are a great piece of equipment to have. I can tell you from experience, I did not have an ATO on one of my tanks at home and it was definitely a pain. I would come home and there would be bubbles spewing out of the aquarium, which is definitely not good because that means the pump is sucking in air, which can degrade the life of the pump. I recently got an ATO on that tank and it has changed my life and made it so much easier. I don't wake up in the middle of the night to my tank gurgling because it needs extra water and it makes it so I only have to fill up that jug about once a month and then I can completely forget about topping off the aquarium. Now typically when you use a gravity fed system or with certain optical systems, you can use your RODI and plumb it directly in. The only danger with this is if your ATO fails, it can just continue to fill up your aquarium and overflow it, cause a salinity swing, and you can have a crash in your tank. So I typically recommend adding a second fail safe in order to prevent anything like that from happening. And I usually will recommend having an ATO reservoir, which fills up either directly with your RODI unit or manually by you pouring your water into there. And all this is, is a container that sits next to your tank or nearby and holds your water in it before it is pumped into your tank itself. Or if you have it higher up, it can be gravity fed into the aquarium. But regardless, this definitely reduces the risk of a flood from having your RODI directly set up 
to go into the tank directly. Now, with ATOs, I recommend a few brands. The first is gonna be the Neptune ATK. This one uses optical sensors and a gravity float valve to ensure that you have extra protection if one of these were to go out. And it's probably the safest ATO on the market because you can also add an additional solenoid that'll automatically cut off whenever your water level gets too high. There's also a lot of other brands like the Tunzi Osmolator, the XP Duetta, and a lot of other ones that work very well, but they're all gonna be a little bit different in cost and the way they fill up your aquarium. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions about equipment, make sure to leave a comment down below and we will answer it. If you guys enjoy our content and wanna stay up to date with our latest videos, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.